Okay, so as I'm recording this, Season 6 is officially two weeks away, so I just thought we'd go over the history of Season 5, since we're going to be leaving it up behind soon, thank god. Been overall probably the worst season of Breakers we've ever had. Enough yapping, we'll get to that later, but we'll start off with the hints. We're going all the way back to the very end of Season 4, when uh, Season 4 got extended as well, I know, so awesome. But the very first thing we got of uh, Season 5 was this image with a uh, Roman numeral 5, I know, very creative there. And it's just saying it's going to come out in February, which is great. At least we had a confirmation, which is awesome. Next up, we got the testimonies. Looking back, I didn't, I can't remember even having this many, but there's actually quite a lot. We got the first one, look at the state of the city. Now, when this first came out, it kind of got people thinking either Goku Black or the androids. But it definitely narrowed down the uh, theme for the season because it destroyed city. There's only two arcs in Dragon Ball, which do that like shtick. And that's uh, the future saga. The next testimony was I made it out thanks to that incredible power. I personally thought that they were referencing super transfers and i think everyone else kind of clocked onto that as well next up that big hand came in and saved me now there was a lot of speculation behind this i was just looking on twitter and i looked at the replies and someone put like a image of Pua, so i was like okay it's probably poor and then but a lot of people were thinking like jiren like topo or like orange piccolo or something something like that like i'm looking at the comments right now of that post and it's like yeah, people had a. People were very confused by this one, but yeah, it turned out it would be. It was Poir, because he's the big Poir hand, you know. <laughs> Next up was I saw a UFO. Everyone basically guessed Jaco, because he, he he rides in the UFO. Um, some people were like, something to do with Frieza, because he rides in the spaceship, but yeah. It was definitely Jaco. I think everyone could. Uh, everyone got that one. Next one was I managed to escape thanks to that bright light. Who was that person? This was referencing uh, Mai's flashbang. Everyone basically got that. Everyone was either guessing Trunks or um, Mai, so yeah. So the final testimony, there's more than one. Uh, yeah, at this point, everyone was basically like, definitely uh, Goku Black. There was a few Android Copers, because again, I guess there is more than one. I think that's what they were going for. Like maybe, uh, you know, trying to mix us up with uh, Goku Black or the Androids. But at this point, everyone was just like, oh, it's Goku Black. Um, so yeah. So yeah, all was revealed in the Season 5 launch stream on uh, February 26th. And yeah, everything basically got revealed. We got a uh, crossplay, which was great. We got Goku Black. We got um, the free survivor skins announced. So the paid ones were Mai with uh, Flashbang and Resistance. Honestly, she's probably, if you're gonna buy a survivor skin with TP, she's probably the one to go because her skills are very meta and Resistance is kind of broken. So yeah, I definitely recommend her. Next paid one was Pua. This was the big hand testimony. Uh, we have Change Bat and uh, Change Hand. Uh, hand is like a stun. It's not that good. That is just kind of like, uh, it's funny, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, Poir's a funny joke one, but, you know, he, he his skills are pretty niche, they're pretty niche. And finally, the free one was uh, Jarko Ship, we'll get to that later. It basically changed the entire meta of Season 5 and made Raider pretty unfun, so yeah, we'll talk about that later, I guess. But yes, the main Raider, Goku Black and Zamasu, with the all-new uh, dual Raider, uh, you know, exclusive ability. Basically covered from base Goku Black all the way up to Corruption Zamasu. Everyone was very excited for this Raider. And I was as well, you know, uh, back back before season five started, it was like, oh my God, this is definitely the hypest Raider we've ever, we've ever seen. And uh, he has a lot going for him. Everyone thought he was gonna be very strong. I don't think anyone thought he was gonna be overpowered, but everyone was like, yeah, this guy is looking pretty nice, pretty nice. So yeah, season five got announced for February 29th. And it also got confirmed that full power Broly from um, uh, Dragon Ball Super, Super Broly movie, Super movie Broly, came with Saiyan Savagery. To be honest, I haven't heard anything like amazing about this skill, or I haven't heard anything bad about this passive, so it's like, I, I think it was, it must have been just decent, so yeah. He also came with uh, his big mouth beam, can't remember what it's called, Gigantic Roar. Uh, still a really good super, so yeah, it was a pretty, uh, it's pretty bad banner, but uh, you know, uh, Full Battle Rally is pretty good. We also got our first event, we got Whis's Wish, which came with a lot of Season 5 tickets, uh, costume, and uh, the classic Are You Seriously Crying? So if you missed out on that emo, I feel sorry for you because it's actually pretty funny. We also got a friend feature in the game, so it's like, yeah, you can, because of crossplay, you can request people from other platforms and have your own Dragon Ball The Breakers friends list, which is so awesome. So February 29th finally rolled around and to be honest the launch was actually pretty seamless. I didn't have any problems with the game. The only problem I had is that I couldn't get to the new map Dark Future on day one. 
I don't know if that was a bug or I was just getting really unlucky, but that was literally it. Crossplay was working fine. It was it was really good, really good start of the season. We had a lot of content. Things were looking up for Dragon Ball the Breakers. Let me tell you that, let me tell you that. Of course, we got a new Dragon tier, which had Jarko, like I already said, but something that was cool, which they also added, they also shadow dropped like five new super attacks, roll transfers, and this was Final Explosion, uh, the big Destructo disc, Spirit Ball, Eat Dome. Okay, if there was one more, I generally can't remember, but they were all pretty good except Spirit Ball, so yeah, you have that. Final Explosion, also like, yeah, probably one of the best super attacks in the game now. So yeah, it was weird that they uh, dropped them silently, but hey, we got more content, I guess. Yeah, so the season officially started, everyone was playing Goku Black. I don't remember anyone being like, oh, he's overpowered, oh, he's um, underpowered, like, it was very even. I feel like everyone was saying a lot of things, but that's just what happens, it's a new raider, it, it just, it, these things happen, I guess. I remember at the start of the season, I thought he was very weak, but like, yeah, nah, as the season continued, you definitely... You definitely can't say that. But yeah, everyone was having a lot of fun, you know, testing out the new survivor skins, testing out the new raider, new transfers, new super attacks. We had so much content. Oh my God, it was so great. But we shall move on to the next banner, base Vegito and base Goku Black. Uh, base Vegito came with two super attacks. He came with finger shot, split finger shot, and like finish buster. They're both pretty okay. Uh, finish buster is really terrible. Goku Black came with uh, Black Kamehameha and Super Black Kamehameha. Uh, the normal one is actually a really good super and is probably like meta. And he also came with a passive called Memories of Battle, which if you took damage uh, and you lost your barrier, you'd get 30% of your dragon change back, which is meta to this day. And it's well, probably the best passive they released this entire season. They also released a stupid Saiyan Day uh, bait banner, which no one summoned for, so womp womp. So moving on to the big moment of uh, all of season five, ranked was announced to start on the 9th of April. Now I think uh, ranked was a big turning point for people's patience of this season because yeah there was a lot of uh, angry players and a lot of people quitting when ranked started. I think the thing was with Goku Black is that he's a very anti new player raider and because he's Goku Black of course there was a lot of new players. You actually had to have like coordination to beat him if he did something like his level 2 strat. If you don't know what that is it's basically where Goku Black stays level 2 so that survivors are gutted out of supplies and changes until they can't do anything and they just destroy the SDM and then technically they win and because of his awesome AoEs and stuff it's like it's pretty hard to escape him because he is He's got some crazy snipes, Goku Black, he really does. But yeah, rank officially started. They made some changes to the rank system from last season. They made it easier to rank up as Raider, but losses would be extremely punishing, and same with Survivor, but they made it harder to rank up with Survivor. And I think no one liked the changes. Uh, I've, I've seen from both ends that uh, it's been pretty annoying to rank up with both because of the how punishing losing is. Me personally, I didn't have any problems getting Z5 with Raider, but I've seen a lot of people complaining about how difficult it is because of pre-mades and stuff and how toxic the, the meta is now for Raiders. So yeah, hopefully in Season 6 they change it up again, but... Just make uh, losing less punishing, that's that's all they have to do. But we got another event, the Spring Festival, where you got like, uh, again, costumes, more more tickets, more everything. Uh, the stickers, the, the stamps, so they just, they weren't that good this this time, I'm not gonna lie guys. But the, dude, the outfit is kind of balling, I kind of like it. Next up is the next banner, we got the Super Saiyan 2 Trunks, which came with Capsule Refrigerator. So this had a lot of controversy, this active, when it first got revealed. Everyone thought, including me, that this would be absolutely broken. Turns out it's pretty terrible, um, it's, it just takes too long to get your change back from it. Uh, something like Memories of Battle is much better for the meta we're in, which is like a lot more fast paced. So yeah, I just remember saying that Raiders are doomed, everyone's saying that Raiders are doomed, and then the active actually released and everyone was pretty underwhelmed. It's probably for the best that it was so bad, because if this active was good, you know, Raiders would be even more screwed than they were before, so it, it's good. Trunks also came with the Warrior of Hope passive, which depending on how many of your allies were dead would increase your limit gauge, but if they were all alive, you'd have less limit gauge. This passive is dreadful. Moving on to Rosé, he came with Divinity Incarnate, which basically gives you damage reduction on melee attacks versus a radar. It's okay, they're pretty niche, just like every other damage reduction skip, like passive in this game. But he came with two new supers, he came with the Rosé Kamehameha, and he came with uh, Scythe, the Spirit Scythe, or whatever. The Spirit Scythe? Nah, just the Scythe. The Scythe is a pretty good super, it does a lot of damage, but uh, it's probably not as good as something like uh, Rebellion Spear. It's still, it's, it's a pretty cool super to run, it's probably one of the best animations in the game. Of course, Goku Day came around, and what did we get? We got a uh, Goku banner with all his fathers and his sons, which is pretty, another bait banner. Hooray! 
Yay! So next up, we got a hint with a blue ball, which looked like a Patara earring. Everyone was like, it's Vegito. And because we had leaks, we all knew it was Vegito. And would you, oh, would you look at that? Vegito and Gogeta from uh, the Fusion Reborn movie. Uh, comes as a banner. This is probably the hypest banner we've ever had, probably next to uh, the Beast Gohan and Orange Piccolo banner. What did they come with? Vegito came with Final Kamehameha and Gogeta came with a passive I've come for you, which when you pop your change, you get your barrier back, which goes pretty well with um, Memories of Battle, so it kind of made that passive stronger when it didn't need to be. I hate Memories of Battle. Uh, Vegito also came with a passive on Parallel Fusion, which basically cut your change in half, uh, but it doubled your damage, I think, something like that. I haven't heard anything good about it again, and I haven't heard anything bad about it, so I'm just going to assume that it was mid. And this is officially the final banner, which had new transfers of Season 5. So it was a pretty good way to go out, I'm not going to lie. So our third and final event of the season was Bulma's Request. We got a multi, and we got three Season 6 tickets. How helpful. Yeah, this this uh, this event was kind of garbage, not going to lie. Actually, I lied. We did get one more event, but it was kind of like a crappy event. Android Transformation Campaign, where if you wore like uh, Android clothing or used Cell as a radar, you, uh, we would get tickets. We'd get five Season 5 tickets, which is stupid because the season was ending. It should have been Season 6 tickets. And uh, five regular tickets. Again, these events, they're pretty garbage. <laughs> so officially, Season 6 was supposed to start uh, on the 12th of June, but unfortunately, we uh, they announced that the season got extended by a whole, like, month, basically. And no one was happy. No one was happy at all. The game was already pretty dry for about a month. Uh, we were all pretty sick of just facing Goku Black every match. And it basically made the whole community depressed. But yes, that is the entirety of Season 5. I think you can tell at the start of the season we're kind of like overwhelmed with content and then as it continues we're kind of just dread fed like new transfers with new passives and stuff. Unlocking new content like behind a gacha system does not fare well for a game so yeah. I feel like this has probably been the worst season I've ever played. It just feels like it dragged for so long and uh, Jaco Ship, I haven't even talked about it but yeah. During midway through the season, basically Jaco Ship kind of took over. It's uh, it's basically a get out of jail free card and everyone has access to it. And uh, most raiders, they do not have mobility. That's just because of power creep. So basically, if you want to rank up as raider, you need to be playing Goku Black or Broly, the two newest raiders or you've probably got a pretty good chance at just straight up losing. So yeah, I want to know what you guys think of Season 5. Did you think there was enough content? Did you think there was too little content? Or did you think there was just enough? I don't think anyone wanted the season extension, so like, yeah. It's just kind of disappointing that the season with Goku Black, arguably the most like requested raider, is also arguably the worst season we've ever gotten in this game's history. But hey, we've already started seeing the testimonies for the new season, and all the hints are going towards Baby from GT, so I'm pretty excited for that. But yeah, let me know if I missed anything. Let me know what else I should include if I make another video like this for season 6. But yeah, thanks for watching, uh, like and subscribe.